This video is brought to you by the Farmer Klein YouTube channel. Be sure to like, subscribe, and comment. Hello, everybody. Welcome back to the Farming Simulator 22 Map First Impressions video. Today, we're going to take a look at the Horse Aggravation Map, which is part of the Horse Aggravation Pack for Farming Simulator 22. But before that, this video is brought to you by Alfredo and Jimmy Anderson. Thank you for being farm barons. So the horse aggravation map, which as I alluded to already, is part of the horse aggravation pack, which is a paid DLC for Farming Simulator 22 and also part of the year two season pass. Now, if you don't happen to have the horse aggravation pack, or if you're maybe looking to pick up the year two season pass, do consider using one of my affiliate links down in the description below. Let me give you a little bit of background related to the horse aggravation map and the horse aggravation farm. So in 2017, Giants hosted a mod contest and in the mod contest, there was a category to create as realistically as possible the horse aggravation farm that is in the Czech Republic. Several map authors took that challenge upon them. They provide, they were provided images of the farm and the buildings. They were provided an overview of the farm area and what area they were to make playable. They provided information about the region itself. In Farm Sim 19, this map made its way yet again to Farming Simulator fans, this time as a standalone mod map that was also offered with the Horse Aggravation Pack, but they were two standalone items. In Farming Simulator 22, the Horse Aggravation Map and Aggravation Pack are back yet again, except now they are combined into a single paid DLC. Now there has been some confusion around the Horse Aggravation Pack from 17, 19, and 22. And I can tell you that while the pack in 17 and 19 shared some pieces of machinery, the entirety of the pack for Farm Sim 22 is brand new. Now it is my understanding that this map was created with Giants and Oxygen David in a form of a partnership. And if you have already seen this map in Farm Sim 17 or 19, it's gonna look very, very familiar because it is to replicate in all three iterations of Farm Sim, they've always been goal to replicate the area as accurately as possible. Now, I do have to say, I think this is the best iteration that we have seen so far of the Horse Aggravation Farm. Let's go ahead and load on in. We are gonna use the mods we typically use when we take a look at maps. That is additional field info, additional game settings, field lease, field calculator, and precision farming. I'm also going to tell you, if you load this map up in farm manager mode or start from scratch, you will find the main farm is built out exactly how you're going to see it here in new farm mode. There are, of course, two exceptions. First off, you do not start with any machinery in those alternate play modes, and you do not own any land. When you load into the farm for the very first time, you start here. Kind of outside what I'm going to be calling, I guess, for lack of a better term, the showroom. They don't know what that building is. But then we have the main horse aggravation farm building complex right here. Let's go ahead and take a look at the PDA. So, big field lovers, you have found yourself a map to enjoy because, oh boy, we have some doozies here specifically Field 9. Now this map does include all the standard crops available to us in Farm Sim 22. And if we go ahead and take a look at the lands area, you'll see we start up by owning Farmland ID 13. That is the main starting farm. In any other play mode, you will have to buy this for $266,000. In addition, we have Farmland ID 14. 14 is gonna be where our silos are located. You're gonna be able to buy that for $258,000. Then we have farmland ID 12 and 11. In addition to that, we also own farmland ID 18 and 17. And then that is gonna be it. Fields of note, farmland ID 16. 
That is field nine. That is 85 hectares in size, or for us Americans, 230 acres in size. Let's go ahead and take a look at our farmland lease screen. The farmland lease screen shows us all of the Bible farmlands, how large those farmlands are, if those farmlands include any field or fields, which is included, and ultimately how much is that farmland going to cost us. Go ahead and take a look at our field calculator screen, and this is going to break down the specific fields and how large each particular field is. And like I said, you're going to find we have some doozies on this map. We have field 9, 85 hectares, field 6, 24, field 5, 25, field 1, 37 hectares, field 12, 13 and a half, field 16, 12.67. Then we have field 17, which we own, starting at 9.91 hectares. So going to take a look at our crop counter. We do have the standard base game crop counter available to us here on this map. And if we take a look down through our prices screen, you will see that we do indeed have the ability to sell all of our base game crops. We also have the ability to sell all of our eggs, wool, and milk, as well as our silage, hay, straw, and grass. Taking a look down through the base game production items, we also do indeed have the ability to sell all of the base game production items. We do not have the ability to buy bulk line, and we do have two places to get rid of our stones. Now, if we would need to play with our platinum expansion production items, we will need to put down our own sell point because this map does not support any of the platinum expansion at the get-go. And if you are playing with pumps and hoses, you will have the ability to sell your separated manure. Let's jump back up here real quick to the precision farming soil map and take a look and see how the gener generic soil map is being applied to these fields. And I have to say, this is gonna be one of our first little disappointments with this map. I had some hopes that this map would follow the trend of other Giants maps that we have seen to date for Farming Simulator 22, in that we would have a custom soil map, but we are using the generic soil map because we've seen a custom soil map for Elm Creek, Old Bellaroon, Erlengrot, and a I don't quite remember if we have a custom soil map for Silver Run Forest, but I was hoping that we would have a custom soil map here, but it's all good. As you can see how those different soil types are going to match out here. In our starting field, field 18, we have some silty clay loam and sandy loam, and field 17, we have a fair bit of silty clay and loam. Take a look at our vehicle overview. We start with all new equipment. None of it is leased and is all fairly well maintained. We do not have any animals pre-placed on the map at the start. We do have contracts available to us. We do not own any production chains. And this map does have 20 collectibles. And that is where I'm going to say is my second disappointment for this map. I was really hoping that we would have some custom collectibles on this map. I thought to myself, you know, it'd be really, really cool if we had custom collectibles that were little toy models of the horse equipment that was in the horse pack. Right? Right? Wouldn't that be cool? If scattered around the map, we found we found little tiger, we found little joker cultivators, we found little pronto cedars and planters and other such things. Sadly, that's not the case. What we have here, we have the Holt Belaroon game cartridges. So we do have collectibles that you can run around and find. But I was really, really hoping that we would have custom collectibles. Let's go ahead and take a look at our starting fleet. So we've got the John Deere 9570RX, the Fent 1050 Vario, the John Deere 8R370, as well as the 936 Fent Vario large tractors. We have the Kloss Lexion 8900 Harvester that is paired up with the Combo Flex 1380 Grain Header. We have the Flegel ASW-271 trailer. We have the Horsch Tiger 8 MT and the Finer 6SL cultivator. Of course, we're going to have Horsch equipment on the Horsch Aggravation Farm. We've got the Horsch Joker 8RT Disc Harrow. We have the Avatar 1225SD Seeder, as well as the Partner 1600FT Seed and Fertilizer Hopper Tank. Kind of support tank. 
We've got the Horsch Mastero 975RX planter. We have a Transformer 12 VF weeding hoe, and this is what's going to follow the rows, if you will, as you move down the field. Then we have a Cura 24ST weeder. This thing is 24 and a half meters wide. We have our RDN 6045 grain header, and then we have a 1500 kilogram, 1150 kilogram, and 1100 kilogram front weights. As far as our mods and DLCs, we do not have any custom items that are part of this map, but of course we do have custom vehicles and implements that are part of the horse aggravation pack itself, and those are listed right here. Let's go ahead and do a little bit of a farm tour. We've got our main farm entrance located right here. So I'm pull the PDA up so you can see kind of where we are. And then this is where we started it all out. And this is for what I'm calling it. I'm calling this kind of like a showroom. I don't know what else this might be. It's a nice carpeted area. We've got some decorations here. These buildings are very, very, very nice. And I really, really wish we could place place these down. And that leads me to my third kind of disappointment on this map. Is I really had hoped that we would see, like every other Giants delivered map for Farming Simulator 22, I really hoped that we would see... A lot of these buildings become placeable objects that we could then make use of in other maps as long as we have the horse aggravation pack activated. Now on the left we have several several little garage bays and for the most part all of these doors are going to operate. In previous iterations of the horse aggravation map a lot of these doors were static. I like that we have functional storage here. Like I said, most, if not all, of those doors are going to open. And the same holds with these doors. Over here we have a liquid fertilizer silo for storage. So you have your dump point, you have your interactive icon, there, 40,000 liters. And then inside here we have the shop. So we have our workshop trigger located right here. And I would like to see, because we do not have markers here indicating where the workshop trigger is, but I will tell you, that is basically the entirety of the inside of this building. So the trigger runs basically the whole width of the building. It extends ever so slightly outside the door. So if you're careful, you might be able to park something right up against the building and hit the workshop trigger. But pretty much, I think you're going to have to bring it on the inside. We have our sleep trigger here, our farmhouse sleep trigger. Then we got a nice little apartment kind of upstairs. Apartment, lounge, and then we have our work wardrobe trigger. A little office overlooking the garage. And then when we do collect our game cartridges, this is where they are going to appear. Now our workshop trigger extends into the following two bays. The workshop trigger extends to about this point. And when I came in here, I got super excited because I thought, oh, do we have lots of pallets of seed? No, these are basically deco items. But then it also led me to hope, oh, it would be cool if this was um, object storage. 
where you could store your seed fertilizer pallets in here as well. But no, that is, that's, that's just decoration. We have our wash bay, our wash bay, I should say, located right here. Continuing on, we have several rows of buildings for implement and vehicle storage. I say tons of storage, tons of storage around here. There we have our transformer hoe, amongst other things. Our harvester trailer, our planter and our seed tank. Over here we have fuel storage. And I'm thinking, I'm trying to think back on the FS-17 version of this map that was part of that map contest. And I was pretty sure that there were animal pins that were put down here. We have a little bit of a placeable area here. It's not flat, so you are going to want to flatten this out. We do have an area here where you could put additional buildings down. And then way down here... We have our farm silo. So we have our fill pipe and then we have our dump point for the farm silo. Now let's go ahead and take a look at build mode. We do not sadly have any custom vehicles, or it's not vehicles, but sheds that we can place down. Like I said, that was one of the one of the big disappointments when I realized it because I could see players really wanting to put some of those buildings down on their own farms on other maps simply just by activating the horse aggravation pack. We do not have the ability to put down our ginormous custom silo, sadly. And then everything else is stock here as well. Under production, we have all base game production items. Base game, selling points, greenhouses, orchards, generators, all base game animal areas, base game decoration. And then as far as our paintable textures go, we do have some paintable textures. Let's just go ahead and put them down right here. We have farm plate. We have animal mud. We have a second variant of animal mud. We have asphalt. We have dirt, forest ground, grass, gravel, gravel dirt, gravel moss, new gravel, and a riverbed. As far as plants, Fairly standard FS-22 plants and standard FS-22 trees. So go ahead and take a look at our textures here. That one feels like a new texture, although I think I've seen it before. We have a couple of variants of animal mud. Field plate. So this is kind of like grooved concrete, worn, worn grooved concrete. Riverbed, new gravel. Then our other various forms of gravel here. Get a little bit of altitude going on. And we do have a decent area here, I believe. Let's just go and check the PDA. So that is, so the grass there, that is 
field 18. Then over here we have field 17. You will notice we do have utility poles crossing several of the fields while we are doing our flyover. You will see these. Do note that these poles do not have collisions. See, so we can go straight through those. So you will not have to worry about hired help or your own vehicles getting hung up with those poles on the various fields. Let's come back over here. So here is our starting farm, a nice large industrial farm area right at the northern eastern corner of the map. And then we have the town off in the distance. Most of that is off the playable map area. Circle our way over here to a cell point just down the street from the starting farm. And then we have our vehicle dealer located right here. We're going to come back to that. We have a bail cell point here as well, just behind the vehicle dealer. Then we have another set of cell points across the street, right adjacent to our farm silo. Got a couple cell points there as well. Now, while this map is fairly basic, there's not a whole lot going on. There is a lot to look at, and there's a lot to like visually. But I do wish, like I said, I do wish that we did have custom collectibles. I wish we did have the ability to place those buildings down. That way we would have even more buildings to put down in our other gameplay. Just making that investment in the horse aggravation pack all that more kind of valuable. I have found these kind of lake areas, these pond areas, rather tranquil and uh, relaxing to just kind of chill out at and just kind of see. It's definitely worth if you even don't want to play on the map, if you've purchased the pack, it's definitely worth simply driving around and experiencing the area. That I will say. Now, with respect to our scoring system, we're going to be giving the map a point with respect to production being built in or areas set aside for such. We have two productions built in, and honestly, I would like to see more productions built in, leveraging the FS22 built-in production functionality a little bit more, but we do have the sawmill here and we have the BGA. Now I fully understand. Fully understand this map is set up to emulate the area in as exacting detail as possible, but I think we could take a little bit of gameplay liberty with respect to putting in a couple other basic production items. Maybe in town having a uh, custom bakery Maybe in town having custom flour mill would be would be something that you could do. A couple others, you know, you could put down a, a spinnery in there and a couple other things. I think that would be nice to see. Here we have a grain cell point. We've got a couple more grain cell points and bale cell points over here. We have another bale cell point and a grain cell point. And then we have the biogas plant. As far as the biogas plant goes, if we own the BGA, we can sell the BGA. There are just a few little exceptions to note. And that is some of these deco boxes are going to remain even if you sell the biogas plant. But I think you could kind of work around those if you wanted to put down your own modular BGA, pumps and hoses BGA, or something else. We do have one large three-sided silage bunker that is not sellable, nor are these equipment ships. With respect to being able to sell all of our base game props, production items, and animal outputs, we are going to be giving the map a full point there as well. And then with respect to, is the farm customizable? The farm is not customizable. Everything is baked in. And again, that is the purpose of this map. But in keeping with our scoring architecture, we will be giving the map zero points with respect to 
that particular metric. What you see right down here below is farmland ID 20, and that is buyable for $27,000. And once you purchase this, you will be able to store slurry right here, kind of as a, a location to stage slurry if you are then applying it to your fields. Here in this little kind of secondary village, if you will, we have another grain and bale cell point located up here. And now we'll circle back over to our vehicle dealer. Like I said, there's, there's not a lot going on here other than some big time agriculture. If you're looking for big fields to play, well, this might just very well be your next map. Let's go ahead and pick up our Mahindra. We do have a rather large area for our vehicles to spawn in. But do note that we do have a little bit of gap. Just a little gap here with respect to getting out of the vehicle dealer. So you are going to be limited a little bit in how you basically navigate outside the dealership. In addition, our dealer trigger is located over here in this secondary building. And just like the main farm, I do wish we did have some markers here indicating where the dealer trigger was. I happen to know by uh, doing the old F5 trick that this trigger basically extends out to about, uh, not to about here, I think, and is fairly wide. It goes from the edge of the building, and it actually goes over, over the fence and over into that area over there. In fact, let's just go ahead and pull it up. There you can see. It's way over there. And it comes over here. The other side of the dumpsters. And then it comes in right in front of or right at the wrench. Now in behind the vehicle dealer. We do have a couple cell points. So we have a bale cell point located right here. Across the street, we then have a grain cell point. Vehicle scale. That's nice. Then we have our farm silo here. And right next to that, we have a bale cell point and a grain cell point. And that is going to be identified as Bramble Store Bales and the Brambles Store. If I can get out over this way. Can indeed. Can indeed. Now, with respect to buildings where appropriate are using the new texture technique, as well as ground textures, I am going to be giving the map a full point there as well. Something I think that has been done really well with this map is incorporate existing buildings that we have in Erlengrot, Holt Bellarune, and Elm Creek in with some newer buildings and it just really flows well nothing really 
Super stands out as kind of being out of place. So I do like how things have been kind of merged here together. Here we have another grain cell point right in behind the shop. I will say good luck on finding those plenty collectibles. They were they were hidden mighty fine when I was running around looking for them. I had to uh, I had to engage some some custom trickery in order to make them rather rather visible, and that still took a while to find them. Make your way down between ginormous field nine and large field five to this little secondary village. Got nice little bridges here over these rivers. Lots of nice little details on the map for sure. Make our way through here. Here we go. We have our green dump point. And again, a nice mashup of new versus old here. At least what I am thinking is new versus old. Make our way past our liquid manure storage. Map edges have been done very well from a kind of from the ground perspective or from a reasonable height, you know, third person perspective. There we have our liquid manure storage. And we do have the ability to get into here, right? So this could be an area we could clear up and make into placeable land. Right? We could place some other things down here, like some production or just farm storage. This is one of my favorite areas on the map is just kind of driving through this area where we got trees, we got the waterway here, and then we actually have the water up over the road a little bit, right here. Just gotta be careful we don't we don't uh, walk hydroplane, right? The water is up. Oh, let's get out of here. The water is up over the surface a little bit here. And then the vast majority of cell points are down here to the southwest. A couple of our smaller fields over here. A couple of grass fields. And this is still field nine, by the way. Yeah, that's still field nine. Probably like a quarter of the map is field nine. So to our right, we have the BGA. So we have our dump point for our digester. We have our dump point for slurry. We have our fill point for digestate. Our interactive icon. The bumper and 
Infinite storage. Then we come through the fence. We have a grain cell point. We have our animal dealer. Right here. And we don't have any animal areas. Kind of knew that. We have a bale cell point located right there. We'll come out of here and make our way around. For the next set of cell points. We have another bale cell point here behind the silos. And then on the other side of the silos, we have a grain cell point. Across the railroad tracks, we have ourselves yet another grain cell point. And then we'll make our way over to the sawmill, which will be where we kind of end the video. So, the final scoring metric, player interactive areas clearly marked. Aside from the desire to have the maintenance trigger at the main farm and the dealer trigger at the dealer marked with corner icons so we know where we have to position our vehicles, everything else is positioned and marked fairly clearly in my opinion. So we're going to take a quarter of a point off there. That's going to give this map 3.75. Remember, it lost a massive score. It mass lost an entire point with respect to the farm not being customizable. I fully understand the premise of the farm is to look exactly how it does in real life. But that does not mean we can't also permit the player to do what they want on their game save by allowing those buildings to be removable. Just saying. There's no reason it can't, we can't have the best of both worlds. None at all. But in the end, the map author has full reign over how they wish to design their map. Now here at the sawmill, we have our log dump and cell wood trigger. We have our wood chip fill area, and we have our interactive icon and we have our blank spawn point. So guys, I would love to hear what you all think of the horse aggravation map, the horse aggravation pack. Couple little things that I wish were a little different, a little bit of a disappointment, but ultimately in the end, none of those factors really goes into the score. I wish we had a custom soil map. I wish we had custom collectibles. I think I think it would be awesome if those custom collectibles were little toy variants of the horse aggravation pack equivalent. That would have been so so cool. And then I really wish these custom farm buildings were ultimately placeable, which would have allowed us, just like with the platinum expansion stuff, to be able to place those things down on our other game saves, assuming that we owned that DLC. That would just have made the pack all that little bit more valuable to the player. And until next time, happy farming.